The AI resistance is building. I'm not just talking about people who are frustrated about slop or worried about their jobs. It's bigger than that. There are more and more people who don't like how AI is changing the world, period. Not because they think AI is generally bad or because they're Luddites, but because we seem to be once again rolling out a technology that works against our own interests. Staying well informed isn't easy. But we recently got a subscription to The Economist, and I've never felt so well informed before. They recently had a very interesting article, for example, about the astonishing drop of immigration in the EU. Yes, you heard that right. Astonishing drop. I didn't read that anywhere else. The Economist consistently delivers original reporting and they cover everything from science to politics, economics and global affairs without dumbing it down or hyping it up. I myself prefer the print version, but of course you can read The Economist online or with their app where you can find the digital version of the weekly print edition as well as short videos and now longer video discussions with their editors, subscriber-only podcasts and audio versions of their articles, which is great for commuting or running errands. And of course, I have a special offer. You'll get 35% off their subscription if you use my link economist.com slash Sabina. And now back to the science news. The AI resistance is most visible on social media. In January, Meta quietly pulled dozens of AI-generated Instagram and Facebook profiles fake personas like Liv the proud black queer mama of two or Carter the dating coach. The problem was real humans seriously hated them. Ironic given that humans spend half their time pretending to be someone else on social media anyway. Then, in March, Meta rolled out AI search features. But again, many users really didn't want this. Some used browser extensions to hide the Meta AI feature. Reddit was all over this. We've seen this problem previously with Google's AI search that so many people hated so much, Google's now moved it into a separate tab. The issue isn't so much the AI systems themselves. It's that companies push them on users who just don't want them. Sometimes the backlash is quite funny. In August, the American fast food chain Taco Bell rolled out an AI-powered voice ordering system. People hated it and some took revenge. In one case, a customer ordered 18,000 cups of water just to force human intervention. Hi, welcome to Taco Bell. What can I get started for you today? Can I get 18,000 water cups, please? Okay. What can I get for you? Yes, so this was the more amusing side of the AI resistance. But a similar thing is happening in earnest in coding. Some open source coding communities like Quemu and Lipvat have explicitly banned AI-generated contributions. The developer framework Cloud Hypervisor has adopted rules that forbid contributions generated by large language models. So if you want to contribute code there, you have to do it the old-fashioned way by googling Stack Overflow answers. Okay, you could say, but really the problem here isn't AI. The problem is AI that doesn't work very well. But people don't like AI even when it works well, sometimes exactly because it works well. For example, to produce digital art. This is why we now have art shows popping up with no AI requirements like Fanax or GalaxyCon. Some music venues have banned AI-generated artwork even for flyers. The other day I had to sign a contract that required me to confirm I hadn't written my essay with AI. I fully expect that by next year they'll ask for proof of suffering as evidence. And this is just as well because the International Confederation of Societies of Authors and Composers has recently estimated that in the next five years creators of music or content in audio and video will lose about 21% or 24% respectively of their revenue to the increasing market share of generative AI. I suspect that this is an underestimate because a lot of creators will look for other ways to make a living, thereby further increasing the Gen AI share. And yes, I'm seriously thinking about what to do when AI is good enough to take on science news. Maybe I'll switch to cooking videos, Sabina's cheese channel.
I can see it coming. But this was only the software side. There's also the hardware issue, the way that AI impacts physical reality. In the United States, multiple towns and counties from Michigan to Illinois to New York have refused to host AI data centers. A similar resistance is going on in Spain, the Netherlands, Ireland and France. Much of the concerns circle around use of land and water. So yeah, you know that's a problem the singularity enthusiasts understand underestimated that people just don't want AI. Or do they? Because here's the twist. There are many cases where people actually prefer AI to humans. One particularly relatable example is that when people discuss health-related topics that they think are embarrassing, they prefer an AI chatbot. On the other hand, when people are angry, they prefer shouting at a human. In retail, surveys show a similar split. Many consumers actually trust AI more than humans to pick good outfits. And a recent study in healthcare found that patients rated AI written physician replies as more empathetic than human written ones. The robots just care more. So what's going on? For one thing, customers aren't generally opposed to AI. They would just prefer to have an option. We've seen this here on YouTube as well with these AI-generated language dubbing tracks. A good idea in principle. In practice, people hated it because they couldn't figure out how to turn it off, which is probably also how the AI feels about us. I'm telling you about this for a deeper reason, though. Artificial intelligence has become an extremely divisive technology. And I suspect that as it inches closer to human-level intelligence, this will become worse. It's likely that we'll see two extreme camps emerge, the tech enthusiasts that embrace it and those that reject it. The latter camp will make a business out of human-only spaces and products. In other news, I recently failed an Are You Human capture. I'm not sure what side of the rebellion I'm on now. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.